some of you may know, I am part of the Genetics PhD program at Stanford, and one of the courses I'm taking this quarter is Genomics and Personalized Medicine. And as part of that course, I got genotyped. So first I want to clarify the difference between genome sequencing and getting genotyped. So if you're trying to do full genome sequencing, what you are trying to do is look at every single base pair in your genome, all of the A's, T's, C's, and G's that make up your DNA. You're trying to read from the first one to the last one and get as much information as possible. So you end up getting these huge long strings of A's and T's and C's and G's that are telling you about your genes and all the regions in between your genes and anything that's in there. However, full genome sequencing is still very expensive. It's quickly becoming more affordable, but it's still a few thousand dollars for you and me to get our genome sequenced. So that's a little bit out of the price range of a course. So what we had done was 23andMe, which is a genotyping service. So instead of looking at every single base pair in your genome, 23andMe looks at your genotype. So they are looking at very specific and indicative positions in your genome known as single nucleotide polymorphisms. Now these single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs, are simply places in your genome where you might have one base and I might have another. So for most of our DNA, you and I are probably completely identical. But there are these positions where people vary. So let's take, for example, a position that looks at whether or not you can digest lactose. So at this specific SNP, you can either have an A or a G. An A means that you are likely to be able to digest lactose. A G means that you are likely to be lactose intolerant. Now remember that you get one copy of each gene from your mother and one copy of each gene from your father, and so you will have a two-letter genotype at this SNP. So for example, I am GG, which means I inherited a G from my mother and a G from my father, and I do not always do so well with dairy products. Now the SNPs in your genome can tell you a lot more than just whether or not you are lactose intolerant. They can tell you things about traits, so brown hair, greenish eyes, they can tell you things about disease risks, and they can tell you things about your ancestry. So because we use 23andMe for my genomics and personalized medicine course, I want to tell you a little bit about what that process was like and what the information I got back from 23andMe was. So we each got our own 23andMe kit, and you have to register that kit online, and then inside that kit you get a tube, and you have to spit a lot of spit into that tube. You mix your spit with some preservatives found in the cap of the tube, put it back in the kit, and mail it back to 23andMe. And then, a few weeks later, I got an email from 23andMe telling me that my data was ready. Now, you might have heard a little bit in the news recently about 23andMe and the FDA and a whole sort of debate that's going on right now about consumer genetic testing for health reasons. So currently, 23andMe does not give out health information as they used to. So what I got back from them was information about my ancestry. So if you think about these SNPs in your genome, I have the SNPs that I have because I got them from my parents, who got them from their parents, who got them from their parents. So you can imagine that SNPs sort of arise in different populations. There are SNPs that are very common to Europeans, there are SNPs that are very common to Asians, to Africans. So by looking at the SNPs in your genome and looking at which SNPs you got, you can sort of piece together your ancestry. Now my 23andMe ancestry report wasn't the most surprising, so I am mostly European, mostly French and German and Italian, and having a mother who is predominantly French-Canadian and a father who is predominantly French-Canadian and Italian, these things were not that surprising. Now one of the other interesting pieces of ancestry information that I got from 23andMe was my Neanderthal percentage. So way back in human history, Humans and Neanderthals had a mating event, and so humans still carry on some certain SNPs that actually came from Neanderthals. So 23andMe can look at those and give you your percentage. I am 3.3% Neanderthal according to 23andMe's algorithm, which puts me in the 99th percentile of humans living today. So I'm pretty Neanderthal. Now, we're not really sure what this means for us yet. You know, it probably doesn't mean that I'm a crazy cave woman who's gonna go out and hunt a mammoth tomorrow, uh, but it does mean that, you know, some of the Neanderthal snips live on in me today, which I think is kind of cool. Now, 23andMe also gives you back your raw data. So you can look at this online or you can download it, and it basically gives you a big long list of all of the snips that they genotyped. So you can go through this, and if you have a specific SNP that you want to look at for a specific trait, you can type in the name of that SNP and go there and see if you have A's or C's or T's or G's in what you have at that locus. So when you get your 23andMe raw data back, it's kind of a fun thing to do to look through at some common SNPs of interest. 
So there are SNPs that correlate to things like your breast cancer risk or your Alzheimer's risk, but there are also some sort of fun SNPs. So I looked up things like whether or not I have wet or dry earwax. There's a SNP for that, and it turns out that I have wet earwax, which I already knew, which is very common and typical of Europeans. But going through each individual SNP on its own and trying to put together all the information that you get from all of these SNPs is a really difficult thing to do. It would take a lot, a lot of time to go through all of these SNPs. But thankfully, I am taking this course, Genomics and Personalized Medicine, which helped me to go through it. So the course tries to tackle the idea of getting your own personal genotype from a few different angles. So the first couple sessions were all about the sort of personal and emotional repercussions of getting your genotype done. So we talked a lot about what it could mean if you got a negative result. Uh, we did a bit on informed consent and all sorts of things surrounding this. Uh, and you don't actually have to get genotyped to take the course. You can go through the course uh, not being genotyped and using sort of an open uh, genotype just to do all the exercises. Uh, but so I did choose to get my own genotype done, which I'm sure none of you are surprised by. And so then going forwards in the class each week, we look at a different disease or sort of a different set of diseases. And then we look at our own SNPs and see what our potential risks are for these diseases. So the class explores our genotypes using a website known as Genotation. And if you have had your 23andMe report done, you too can upload your data to Genotation and go through some of the exercises on the website. So there's everything ranging from your Neanderthal SNPs to your ancestry, to your disease risks, to some pharmacogenetic methods as well. You can also put in your SNPs for your ancestry and it'll plot you on a graph of where you might fall in the world, so what your population groups are. So this is pretty cool to do individually, but it's also really cool to do as a class because we can each individually look at our own results from our genotype and then upload them and they'll all get plotted uh, onto a large graph or map or whatever, whatever we're looking at for the whole class. So genotation also looks at SNPs correlated with disease risks. And it's always important to remember that there are very few SNPs in your genome which are a yes or no answer for a certain disease. So most of the time what we're looking at is an increased risk for a disease. You might find out that you have an increased risk for cardiovascular disease or if you're me, a super decreased risk of diabetes, which was an awesome thing to find out. So you can go through this and you can sort of think about these different ideas of, well, because I have a decreased risk of diabetes, does that mean that I can sit around all day and eat fast food and lots of sugar? Probably not. Uh, that probably would not be a good idea for my health. But if you do find out that you have something like a really increased risk of diabetes, you can start to think more about sort of exercising and eating right and all sorts of things that would really be good for your health anyways, uh, but you know, might be something you wanna consider. So for me, the experience of getting genotyped both through 23andMe and this class was something that I had wanted to do for a long time and something that I had put a serious amount of thinking into. So it's very possible when you get your genotyping done that you're gonna get back a result that you're not expecting. So some of the SNPs that 23andMe looks at uh, include things like your Alzheimer's risk. So it was very possible that I was going to get my data back and find out that I was at an increased risk for early onset Alzheimer's. And so I really thought about whether or not I would want to know that information, who would I wanna share that information with, right? Because I get my DNA from my parents, and so if I found out that I had something, you know, that was at an increased risk, that also has implications for them. Would I want to tell them? Would they want to know? So this is something that I discussed with friends and family before I got it done and really put a lot of thinking into. And I decided that for me, I really wanted to know as much information as possible because if it was good news uh, in my genome, that was pretty exciting. And if it was bad news, I personally would want to know that to be able to sort of do some forward planning for uh, care and sort of planning for what would need to be done at later points in my life. So personally, I'm really happy to be on sort of the forwards edge of this. Uh, I didn't have anything in my health that I was especially concerned about. I just wanted this information to sort of be proactive and go forwards because if there had been something in there that was negative, I wanted to be able to sort of catch it quickly and as fast as possible. But I really do think that going forwards, genomes and your genetics are going to play a much bigger role in medicine. Now maybe I'm a little biased as a genetics PhD student thinking that genotyping is the way of healthcare in the future. But I really do think that as time goes on and in the next few years, more and more people are going to be getting their genome sequenced and getting genotyped. 
So if you don't take anything else away from this video, I want you to sort of take away the idea of what genotyping is. It's looking at certain positions in your genome, single nucleotide polymorphisms, SNPs, which are correlated with these different disease risks or traits. And I also want you to remember that it's very rare that a SNP is a yes or no answer. Often these SNPs are correlated with increased or decreased risks of having a trait or getting a disease. So think of genotyping as looking at just a few little spots on the map of your genome and trying to make inferences about what that could mean about you and your health. And as always, I need you to remember to go forth and do science.